tonight on KVR News. UT updates criminal investigation policies. Find out about student phone usage. And UT's fine art library is saved. You're watching KVR News, your leader for live local UT coverage. Broadcasting live from the Texas Student Television Studios at the University of Texas, you're watching KVR News at Not, Austin's leader for live local UT coverage. Your news starts right now. Good evening and welcome back to our very special episode of KVR News for Monday, April 9th. I'm Rolando Hernandez. And I'm Abigail Redondo. This week is Texas Student Television event 24-7. The cameras will be live 24 hours a day for the whole week. 24-7 is a part of the Texas Student Media's fundraiser, Support Student Voices. Well, obviously, Abigail, you know everything about the studio, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure our viewers do. We have some very heavy and big expensive equipment here, and we could use as much help as we can get. Oh, yes. It doesn't come cheap, so any donation helps. If you'd like to donate, go to supportstudentvoices.org and click Donate. The pharmacy professor involved in the domestic violence scandal this past February was found dead this week. The medical examiner has not released the report, leaving the cause of death unknown. Earlier this year, Richard Morissette pleaded guilty for attacking and choking his girlfriend in 2016. President Fenvis announced on Friday that UT will strengthen its policies regarding how the university responds to criminal investigations involving their employees. These new policies will not only require employees to report any arrests, it will also require them to follow up on the outcome of their case. ...of UT student Hadika Weiser. UT partnered with the Weiser family to expand its Be Safe program to include a campaign called Walk With Me. Walk With Me encourages UT students to be aware of their surroundings and to look out for their peers. We spoke to Cindy Posey. Hanukkah's parents asked to be involved, so we met with them, and they liked the idea of changing Don't Walk Alone to Walk With Me, which I thought was beautiful, and uh, we were happy to change the wording to walk with me and one of the things that that Tom Weiser really was pushing was the sense of community and in honor of Hadika the University of Texas Police Department has embedded the be safe logo with a gold flame and has plans to use this flame and other designs throughout April Recent data released by analytics firm Flurry says, on average, a person spends five hours on their mobile device. We talked to Longhorns to figure out how they feel about using your phone too much. I definitely spend a lot of time on my phone. I actually deleted some of my social media accounts, like I don't have Twitter or Instagram, but I still have Facebook and Snapchat. So I'm mostly on YouTube 33% uh, of the time and then I'm on Safari and Instagram and and then stuff like I play chess so and Snapchat. The app that I've used the most is in the last 24 hours is YouTube and it's 1.6 hours on screen 28 minutes in the background. It's been a few weeks since the Austin bomber confessed on video, which left the Austin Police Department fighting over 60 requests to release the confession. However, APD has no plans to release the recording or documents. They are citing the investigation is still open. State laws allow the police department to decide whether or not they release the video. In an effort to continue the conversation about gun control, students across the country organize over 100 town hall meetings with three town hall events taking place in Central Texas. State Senator Kirk Watson was one of the many lawmakers in attendance. At Emos in South Austin, the students who organized Austin's March for Our Lives left empty chairs for U.S. Senators Ted Cruz and John Cornyn, who were both invited but did not attend. UT's Fine Art Library is saved. Previously, books, scores, scripts, and more were scheduled to be removed from the library to make classroom space. 
This decision clashed with mass opposition from the student body and faculty who were upset over the loss of resources. After several months of protesting, UT announced on Friday that they would keep the books. It was kind of, not empowering, but like reassuring that uh, we as students and like as a community had enough voice that like it wasn't just, it could have been really easy for them to just like silence it and shut us up and do what they wanted to do anyway because we don't technically have any authority in the situation. Voices Against Violence is hosting several campus events during the whole month of April. The topics include viewpoints from all different demographics while spreading awareness and supporting survivors. For the full list of events, you can go over to UT's Voices Against Violence website at cmhc.utexas.edu. From KDR News. More on the Facebook data breach. And we take you behind the wheel of an Uber. We'll be right back with more news. Watching KBR News at 9. Your campus, your news. A fire on the 15th floor of Trump Tower left one resident dead and six firefighters injured. The victim, 67 year old Todd Brasner, was an art collector who had a portrait of himself made by famous artist Andy Warhol. No members of the Trump family were at the building at the time of the fire, but President Trump and his son Eric sent out tweets thanking the New York Fire Department for their work. This marks the second fire at Trump's New York building this year. Three months ago, a fire in the cooling tower of the roof of the building left two people injured. If you were wondering whether your private information was swiped by Cambridge Analytica, you can now check. Users will receive a message and their notifications about their data being stolen. On in addition, every Facebook user received an article that sh shows what applications are using and sharing your data. Next, for Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg testifies about the scandal in front of Congress tomorrow and Wednesday. KVR will be sure to keep you updated throughout the week. A new social ranking app made its way into millions of Chinese citizens' lives. According to a government document, the social credit system aims to implement the idea that keeping trust is glorious and breaking trust is disgraceful. The mandatory system is planned to be fully operational by 2020, but is already in widespread use. Similar to private credit scores, the system monitors behavior and adds or subtracts points. Losing points may stop you from using trains or getting the best jobs. You may even find your name on a blacklist, which could result in not being able to apply for a credit card. More points grant you more likes on dating apps or lower bills and interest rates. Human Rights Watch is calling the rankings chilling, but some citizens say it, match, it makes people's behavior better and better. Austinites expect to see colorful dockless bikes and scooters around downtown and central Austin in the coming year. The bikes and e-scooters, which charge roughly a dollar per hour, are part of a nationwide movement toward innovative ride-sharing. However, they are having some setbacks. Major cities such as Dallas are struggling with undocked bikes being vandalized and left in busy areas. A one-year limit is set for all companies looking to bring their ride-shares to the city. City staff estimates that by early summer, Austin, Austin can expect to see around 3,000 of these rentable bikes and scooters. Whether they're taking you to the mall or giving you a ride to the movies, rideshare apps are used by Longhorns all across the 40 acres. Rolando took us behind the wheel with a personal interview from the back seat. Ride Austin, Lyft, and Uber? What do all these things have in common? They're all essential rideshare services that Austinites rely on to get home after a late night or even just to get to a doctor's appointment. But how can we trust random strangers to give us a ride home? We got a little closer with our Uber driver with a personal interview while on the road. It's absolutely a side job. My full-time job, I tend bar down on Dirty 6th Street at the San Jack Saloon. But um, no, me and the family unit are just saving up money for a house. For half a mile. Uh, prices in Austin have gotten insane. 
So, you know, I'm the guy that moved here in 1992 and didn't buy anything. Smart, right? <laughs> Do what you want. Just, uh, clock out when you want. Clock in when you want. You don't have a boss. You just, you know, keep your car clean and maintain a good conversation. Get people where they're going safely, and that's it. You know, if you know how to drive, you can do the job. So, and it's, it's, I couldn't see myself just hanging up by Barky, like at work and doing this full time, but for, you know, extra income, you know, it's great to have. You know, it's, if you're ever in a pinch, if you ever like, I really could use an extra 50 bucks in my bank account today, go out and drive a few hours and hit the button and they'll deposit it the same day. You know, Abigail, with all these like surprising Facebook messages, I'm like pretty glad I deactivated my Facebook a long time ago. Well, I still have my Facebook, so we'll see if I get that message. Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all these surprising stories and this surprising <laughs> weather, like... Yeah, this weather is totally unexpected. I don't even know what to expect Yeah, you're, day. Yeah, you're telling me. Yeah. All right, well, let's see what Jennifer has for us in the Weather Center. Jennifer? Thanks, Abigail and Rolando. You never really know what to expect with Texas weather. But don't worry, we'll see some sunny days, Longhorns. Stay tuned to see what is going on with Austin's weather after the break. Have a news tip or story idea? Call the KBR News Tip Line, 475-8181. Welcome back to KBR News. I don't know about you, but Texas weather sure makes my wardrobe change wildly from one day to the next. This past weekend was a bit chilly. However, today's high of 64 was more bearable. The low for tonight will be 51 degrees. Yes, day. Of 51. Wednesday will be mostly sunny with a high of 85 and a low of around 60 degrees. But don't leave without a jacket. Wind gusts could reach as high as to pull back down again Thursday night with a 20% chance of rain until Friday night. The weekend looks really nice. Saturday and Sunday should be mostly clear and sunny with temperatures in the 70s. Hopefully the sun is shining bright for all our longhorn runners this weekend at the Longhorn Run. Live in the Weather Center, I'm Jennifer Gonzalez. Back to you, Abigail and Orlando. Thanks, Jennifer. We'll be right back with sports. Welcome back to KBR News. I'm joined alongside Henry Corwin. Texas baseball had a very successful week as they were victors in five consecutive games. The Longhorns had two games in the middle of the week against McNeese State and Corpus Christi, respectively, as well as a three-game weekend series against the Baylor Bears. This weekend, the weekend series finale was a 4-1 win for the Burnt Orange. And let's take a look at the highlights. Texas looking to complete the sweep against the visiting Baylor Bears. Cody Clements. The man, he will get things started with an RBI single into the right field gap as Tate Shaw comes in to score, giving Texas the early 1-0 lead. Later on in the inning, redshirt freshman Zach Zubier cranks one deep to left center field over the wall, increasing the lead, Texas lead to 3-0 after one. Blair Henley was on the mound for the Horns. In the top of the second, he's taken deep by Davis Wenzel as the true freshman cuts the deficit to two, trying to keep Baylor in this one. But later on in the game, Blair Henley, he would get into it. If you finish the game with yeah, he went in strong innings. And it was very big for him at coming off a tough outing last week. Big game from Tate Shaw, both at the plate and in the field. As you can see here, an impressive running catch to rob the Bears of an extra base hit. 
And Texas with a big chance here with the bases loaded to blow this game open. OJ Pratinsky at the plate. However, he grounds out the third as the game stays at 3-1. The Baylor Bears were standing their ground with some solid relief pitching to give themselves a chance. But Blair Henley here with runners on first and second. Baylor tries a sacrifice bunt, but nice heads up play by the Longhorns to get the lead runner. Blair Henley is able to get out of the jam with a strikeout. To win the game by a score of 4-1 to one to complete the series sweep and win five consecutive games in the week. This brings the Longhorns record to 22-12 and 12 on the year and a 9-3 and three record in the Big 12. Moving on, Texas was represented at the Masters this past week by senior Doug Gim. Tell about Gim's play, Henry. Oh, I'd be happy to. Longhorn Doug Gim had an incredible weekend at the Masters as he was the only amateur to make the cut. Gim took home the Silver Cup, which is awarded to the amateur, with the best showing after the first 36 holes. He became just the third Longhorn in history to win the Silver Cup. He finished the tournament 8 over par and tied for 50th place, and was the first amateur to sink three Eagles in the Masters since 1969. As regards to the rest of the tournament, former Longhorn Jordan Speed finished 8 under 64 for third place, and the Masters was won by Mr. Patrick Reed, his first major win of his career, so congrats to Patrick. Thanks, Henry. Now let's head over to Carly to see what's new in Hollywood. Carly? Thanks, Raleigh. We asked students for their thoughts on celebrities and politics, and we will be showing our viral video of the week and an adorable romantic gesture in Austin. We'll be right back with your entertainment news. Watching KBR News at 9. Your campus, your news. Welcome back to KBR News. For the past week, a politically charged feud erupted between Fox News anchor Sean Hannity and late night talk show host Jimmy Kimmel, in which the two publicly insulted one another on their programs. We asked students if this major media figure should use their platforms for political issues. Not everyone knows a lot about politics, and I think that much more people watch these talk shows. And by having the talk show host like giving their opinion or even bringing it up, it sort of brings all these people on the fence about politics into the game and maybe spurs them into action on voting and uh, thinking more about these topics. It can bring attention to like issues that we actually do need to focus on, like preventing shootings and stuff like that. Like I know when Matthew McConaughey showed up here, it got a lot of press. I think, I think it's important that they voice their opinions because they're, they're influences to the younger generation. Jimmy Kimmel has now apologized for his remarks about Hannity on Twitter, saying that verbally attacking each other due to their opposing political views does nothing good and in fact is harmful to our country. The viral video for this week is an adorable video of a puppy cuddling up to Twitter user Clint Fallon. The tweet has over 60,000 retweets and 200,000 likes. Last February, Austin celebrated its sixth anniversary of being the nation's largest no-kill city. It's no surprise that this video is such a treat for this animal-loving city. Austin's oldest annual race, the Statesman Cap 10K, maintained its traditions this year at the state capitol. However, this was the first time the race finished with a proposal. Daniel Chavez told his girlfriend, Lauren Crunk, he couldn't run with her anymore because of an injury the night before the 10K. But really, he was plotting to propose on the sidelines with a sign that said, Go Lauren, run now, marry me later. She said yes and was so excited that she didn't even finish the race. Carly, and thank you for tuning in. Make sure to follow us for news updates throughout the break. You can follow us on Twitter at KVR News and like us on Facebook. I'm Abigail Redondo. 
and I'm Rolando Hernandez. But before we go, if you'd like to make a donation, you can go, and support, you can go to supportstudentvoices.org. Also, this Friday we are relaunching TSTV's new political sh talk show, Tower Talks, will premiere from 4 to 6.30. Be sure to check it out. Have a great week.